Hey guys, I'm going to do this tutorial that is basically taking this image here, this rendering that I did a long time ago, and I'm going to try and put a watercolor effect on it. I'm going to do it live and I'm going to be figuring out things a little bit as I go. Not that I haven't done this before, but I'm always trying new processes to try and make it better. So I'm going to try some new techniques here. So there's my original rendering. Here is a kind of paper texture that I just downloaded from Google. You can see I've got a couple different copies of the original. So let's take this. And watercolor is going to be all about building layers. So first I'm going to take the original rendering and put it on top of the paper. Let's go to Filter, Stylized, Glowing Edges. That's fine. Edge width 1, Edge Brightness 4, Smoothness 1. Actually, we might tend to brightness down that then you can control I to invert it and image adjustments desaturate and that gives us kind of our line work you can also try filter other maximum see what this gives you if you set it to radius one you can see that cuts out some of the line work and just leaves the heavier stuff maybe we can adjust the levels Okay, that's one option. I'm not sure I like it here, so let's go back to that. That's fine. And let's just put that to multiply onto that paper. Now I'm going to mask out some of that later, but let's leave it there for now. Let's take another copy of the original, put it on top. And let's start building layers of watercolor paint. So for this first layer, we can do something like artistic, maybe dry brush. No, I don't like that. Cut out. That's a little too sharp. Uh, let's see, this palette knife is always good. Okay, and let's make these big strokes, kind of like that. Take out some of the detail. This is for kind of our underlying layer our lowest layer so this one can be a little more blurred and in fact I'm gonna put a blur on it just kinda of get big globs of color okay then we can take that put a mask on it by hitting the new mask button then set the color to black and use the fill tool to fill that whole mask so that the whole thing goes away and then we'll go back and start painting some in with a white brush. So in my tool presets here I have some brushes set up that I'll make available after this video is over for download for you but these are some custom brushes I've been messing with. So I want to take this watercolor wash brush make sure I'm set to white and start bringing back in some of that color you can see it happens pretty slow because of my settings. That's what the mask looks like right there. I can turn up the opacity and maybe even the flow, get it to come in a little more quickly. Not sure I like that, but it kind of just makes it look like there was wet paper and then there was just little drops of paint placed into it. Just trying to mimic some of the techniques of watercolor. Bring in some of that sky. So that doesn't look very nice yet. Hopefully it will when we're done. We'll see. There's my mask. That's okay. I like it. All right, we need more copies of this. Control J to copy that original again, put it up on top. Now we need to bring in kind of a more detailed layer. So for this one, let's do a different kind of filter on it. Like maybe, let's see, brush strokes. Let's just go in and see some of these and see how they look. Angle strokes, not really good for watercolor. Spray strokes, none of these look really good. Like I said, I kind of always, Always do it differently per project. 
come up, I want to show you a lot of different techniques so you can kind of decide, mix and match, and do what you want to do. Okay, I don't want to use any of those. Here, I'm in palette knife, putting my stroke size a little. I think between palette knife and paint daubs and dry brush, you can get the kind of thing you want. So those are really similar, all those. Let's just leave it on these settings here. That gives us a little more detail. Now we need to build, do the same thing like we did before, make a mask that's all black. And then we need to change to white again and start bringing in some, some color again. So here's one watercolor brush that I have. You can see bringing back in some of the color. I want that to be a little more opaque for some of this. I like kind of what that's doing. Now this is going to be all about painting masks and building up layers of, of watercolor paint. Okay, so there's that brush, which is doing an all right job. There is also this brush here, which watercolor straight stroke, which I really like. Looks like it'll work a little faster too, but it has this kind of jaggedy edge that kind of looks like like it's a paintbrush. So just kind of stroke some of this color back in. Um, maybe turn down the flow a little bit and I might want to adjust the brush so that, let's see what we got going on here. Flow jitter uh, let's let's maybe use something like that so that it flows more or less as if we press harder or softer. By the way, you're going to absolutely need a Wacom tablet for this. There's really no other good way to do this. Uh, pen pressure. That's okay. All right, we just want to. Okay, so just start using this brush. Of course, I always modify brushes as I go because it depends on the project. It depends on the certain image that you're painting, how that brush is going to look or work with that particular task at hand. So there's not really a one-size-fits-all for this, to be honest. Like I said, I've tried a million different techniques. I'm always refining, trying to do better. And this one may or may not be the best technique, but it'll show you a lot of ideas that you can apply to your own project. So that's kind of the idea here. Okay. Don't like how hard that edge is at the bottom. And a good idea is to look at reference images of watercolor. Of real watercolor so you can kind of try to mimic what is going on there. Okay let's look at that mask real quick. Wow looks like that. Now I have this other brush which is under a mixer brush tool because if you go into the mixer brush tool and you can use this mixer watercolor 2 that I've been messing with you can see you just want to adjust this flow up and down to try and get it to do what you want. But this kind of makes it look like you're taking paint that's already on the canvas and putting water on it to make it kind of, uh, uh, what's the word, thin out a little bit. You know how it is with watercolor, how you can apply water after the fact to kind of thin that paint out and spread it a little more and things like that. So this this mixer brush can kind of mimic that a little bit. So just take some some of the places and mix the paint a little bit. There's that. See down here that kind of looks like paint was was spread out with a little more water. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's let's build another layer. Now this layer is going to be our our more high detailed one. So let's find a good filter to put on it that isn't too destructive. 
still gives us a lot of the detail we want, but doesn't look too photorealistic either. That dry brush, it's not really working like I want. No. Maybe something like that. It's not bad. No. Okay. Now let's just paint another mask. With this one, we're going to be painting obviously more in the parts we really want to focus on. Let's get that straight guy out again. And this is where we, we really focus the eye by putting putting the detail back in the areas where we really want to focus. And make sure and try and go in in different directions like you would with an actual paintbrush. So we want some detail in the house. Like that. Maybe in some of this landscaping up front, car, and then kind of fade as you go to the edges. Okay, there's a pretty nice watercolor. Not sure that's how, let's see, we want these to interact a little bit differently with what's below them. So let me see what I can do there. Okay, what I've done here is experiment a little bit. So I've left this one on overlay put this one to color burn and put this one on normal but turn down the opacity to 80 okay and this is where you can really go wild uh, this could be anything I mean it'll give you different totally different effects depending on what you set it to for your I mean even that's kinda cool so depending on what kind of effect you want you can change all these blending modes to different things. That one doesn't really work. Back to that. And see, that's cool. And then you can bring this one back in in specific places. So this one gives you kind of your correct color, but only in the places where you paint this new mask. You can kind of bring in the sky just with brush strokes like that. Now we're really focused right there in the front of the house and the rest is kind of fading out. That looks kind of like a watercolor painting. The only thing I don't like is all, all this, this line work that kind of looks muddy. So let's finish it up by masking some of that out and we'll just get kind of a big solid brush, put a mask here Make sure we're on black. Actually, let's make it softer. And this is, uh, your, your watercolor doesn't need to look like this, but you can use these techniques in different combinations and things with different blending modes. And really the uh, possibilities are limitless. You just have to, the, the principles will always apply, the same principles. So let's take, and that, those principles are essentially building layer upon layer, kind of like water and paint. So if I go to this ballpoint pen here, I can do kind of a, a border for this on a new layer, of course, it's a sloppy sloppy uh, border but that's okay make it look a little bit hand drawn hold down shift for that bottom one to get it nice something like that 
Yeah, it looks a little sloppy, maybe, but that's okay. And then you can keep on, uh, you can just keep on going forever. I mean, you could do all sorts of different things to this. Maybe we could take these, this top layer and adjust the levels. Yeah. Anyway, play with it. Have fun. Let's see. I want to bring in one more thing. Where's that brush? And obviously, this is this is where your artistic license comes in, and you can you can go crazy with all of this, and uh, just use these techniques and and build layer upon layer of different different styles, different level of blur, and different lo different level of detail. Use different blending modes. And uh, play with it and have fun. Come up with some cool stuff. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was helpful to you. Uh, see you next time.